gaming reviews done quick, but not responsible for accidental death or dismemberment. It's the One Minute Rundown. I'm O.C. Trinity, your host, and since I'm here, chances are I've made a very poor career choice. This time, we're running down Five Nights at Freddy's. That's right, this time we're off to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, an obvious Chuck E. Cheese stand-in with a horrible secret that the animatronic mascots unintentionally turn into psycho killers after midnight. You play as the night security guard, and with control over a few cameras, lights, and a limited supply of power, all you have to do is hold off the bad guys and survive until the end of your shift. For five nights, of course. It's an indie game that probably would have been doomed to obscurity had it not been for a few prominent YouTube personalities playing the game where it got a lot of praise for its surprisingly detailed backstory and minimalistic game design, as well as taking a kiddie concept and turning it on its head. Oh, and jump scares. Lots and lots of jump scares. But anyway, there are four games in this series. Are you ready for Freddy? So this is a tough one for me to talk about because I feel like on paper I should like this game because I like having limited resources to get done when I need here. And yet I find myself thinking this game is just okay. Maybe I misunderstood how to make much progress here. Or maybe I just don't like being scared. Maybe it's because I guessed incorrectly how this game was going to work. What I thought I was getting at first was a game where I had free movement around the restaurant avoiding the animatronics and finding bits and pieces of the game's lore along the way. In actuality, the lore is more implied or hidden, and literally the only things I can do are view the different cameras, turn on lights, and close the doors, and that feels way too limited. Honestly, I think I would have liked what I came up with in my head better. And yet, it's pretty obvious what the game was aiming for is to keep the player vulnerable and scared and in a constant state of paranoia, and really, they nailed that. I mean, you will die frequently accompanied by these jump scares when it happens. Honestly, I think this is a good idea for a game. I just couldn't figure out if it wasn't executed well or was just a bad pick for me personally. Either way, though, not my thing. So what changes in the sequel? Well, to be blunt, not enough to convert me into a fan. What did change was that in the new restaurant there aren't any doors, but there is a music box that wards off a few animatronics, as well as a flashlight that startles some, and a Freddy mask that confuses them into thinking you're one of them. Oh, and for the second half of the game, a lot more animatronics because apparently one version of each of them wasn't enough anymore. So yeah, huge difficulty spike, and my repeated failures even getting that far made me realize what it is exactly I don't like about this game. There's not a lot of explanation for what you're doing wrong. I mean, about all I know is that Foxy or Chica or whoever got me. That's it. And yeah, I get that's kind of the point, but there's not really any accountability to make sure the AI is playing by the rules or a traceability to figure out what those rules are or explanation for how I died. In short, I'm not left with enough to learn from my own mistakes, and yet I'm not sure what I would do to fix it. Maybe I didn't give this enough of a chance to figure out more, I don't know, but the game really hasn't given me any incentive to want to try any harder more changes abound here. The restaurant's been replaced by an amusement park horror attraction built on the legend and set pieces of the first two games. You've got an unlimited supply of power, but the systems do break down occasionally, requiring you to restart them to get them back online. Joke about the blue screen of death goes here. And this time there's only one bad guy to deal with, though a very persistent one, and it's possible to hallucinate even more of them. And here we get more proof that you can take the same core idea from before, throw some fresh ideas into it, and still get a bad game. I like the new mechanics, and yet it's such a small improvement that I want to score this lower than the previous games for trying to pass the same concept back to me. I mean, I'm still drawn to the lore enough that I did the research on all the bits and pieces, and the game retained its sense of dread and vulnerability from before, and in the end, those are about the only good things I have to say about... Well, this whole series, really. If anything, I get the... Wait, what just happened? Are we still recording? The game footage just dropped. Something's wrong. Why? We have an auxiliary camera we can use, right? Okay, I don't have an auxiliary camera, but I do have a cell phone. That'll work for now. But I think I know what happened. If I move a little to the left, then... Yep, that's it. If you missed this before, I usually inherit some abilities related to games I'm reviewing. You know, I don't think they've ever worked this much against me right now. Okay, I had to tempt fate with that, didn't I? I'm still recording this. Anybody have a flashlight on their phone or anything? Okay, he's not going to come near us if you keep looking at it, but you know what? Screw this. I'm not bothering with the review anymore. 
This is the fourth game now in an RPG spin-off and development that I probably won't be checking out. If you like these games, I don't have recommendations for you because honestly, I can't comprehend what you liked here. Check back soon for the next one minute rundown where I'll play something I know I actually like. All three games got a D. Check the Facebook page for more stuff. Don't agree, want clarification, leave a comment. Five Nights at Freddy's Zone by Scott Cuffin. All rights reserved. That's it. We're done here. So, um, anybody, I have an idea. Does anybody order mushrooms on their pizza? Good, because I'm going to need that.